Joe Biden announces his infrastructure bill, which makes Twitter go crazy after Kristen Gillibrand uh, proclaims that child care, paid family leave, and caregiving are part of infrastructure. We dive into, is this video infrastructure? This is your uh, April 8th Nuts and News update. Uh, please like and subscribe if you're liking for uh, daily news content, and let's dive on in. Starting us off from Breitbart, Kristen Gillibrand proclaims paid leave, childcare, and caregiving is infrastructure. Gillibrand's tweet gone viral is in defense of President Joe Biden's $2.25 trillion, $2 trillion infrastructure proposal, which includes light items beyond traditional infrastructure subsidies like paid leave. Paid leave, child care, caregiving, housing, kitchen for healthier schools, lunches, corporate tax heights, elder care, research and development to address the warming, warming glow, excuse me. Typically, infrastructure investments encompass railways, bridges, and road. Uh, paid leave is infrastructure. Child care is infrastructure. Caregiver, caregiving is infrastructure. Some view that Gillibrand, along with the Biden administration, is attempting to perhaps reinvent the word infrastructure to fit their policy necessities. Republicans have caught on to the game by face uh, fictitiously joining Gillibrand on Twitter, named fictitious items that they presume would also qualify under the Democrats' new definition of infrastructure. Tweets are as follows. Abortion is infrastructure. Gun control is infrastructure. Forced unionization is infrastructure. Whatever the left wants is infrastructure. You know it's not road and ridges. Only 5% of Biden's infrastructure bill is road and bridges with uh, clown emojis. Uh, John Cardillo uh, has gummy bears are infrastructure, stuffed unicorns are infrastructure, scented candles are infrastructure. Uh, bun, uh, ben Dominich, brunch is infrastructure, Kendall Jenner is infrastructure, the Snyder Cut is infrastructure. Donald Trump Jr., I don't know and think any of those things are infrastructure, but you know it is the wall. Um, anyways, this is kind of the w talk of uh, why infrastructure is trending on Twitter, and we're going to look into a little bit of it. Uh, Secretary Buttigieg, we got a lot, to, a lot of work to do with infrastructure. Transport, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg weighs in about the president's infrastructure plan, saying U.S. infrastructure is in tough shape and in need. So the question for uh, Buttigieg is, what is considered infrastructure? I think that Breitbart did have it correct. When we generally refer to um, infrastructure, we're thinking of things like roads, transportation, um, you know, highways, bridges, sidewalks, those types of things. We're not really thinking about paid family leave and the whatnot. Um, MSNBC also had a survey that most Dems, 35% of GPs support infrastructure plan from a poll in the weeks, um, sorry, in the weeks of Mr. Trump's turn, representative, this is regarding Mike Gates. I don't know why they changed it on me. Um, essentially what was going on in the original piece was they had that uh, about 80% of Democrats approved of the uh, infrastructure bill and roughly 35% of the GOP. So what we're seeing is the typical partisan split. Um, coming from the National Review, Biden's infrastructure bill aims to end single family zoning. So this is some of the critiques going at it. Um, infrastructure normally doesn't have something to do with housing regulation um or you know zoning laws but that seems to be something that's been introduced as part of it with the introduction of his massive 2.3 dollar infrastructure bill president biden's campaign to end suburban single family zoning has begun if you think the issue was debated and resolved during the 2020 presidential campaign you are mistaken it's true that biden's campaign platform openly and unmistakably pledged to abolish single family zoning single family zoning refers to things like um you know your single family homes uh, specifically things like suburbs um, as soon as President Tr uh, Trump made the, an issue of that pledge, however, Biden went virtually silent on the issue, and the Democrat supporting press falsely denied that Biden had any designs on single-family zoning at all. Now that he's president, Biden's infrastructure bill openly includes programs designed to eliminate single-family zoning, which Biden calls exclusionary zoning. How exactly does Biden plan to end single-family zoning? According to the fact sheet released by the White House, Biden is calling on Congress to enact an innovative new competitive grant program that awards flexible and attractive funding to jurisdictions that take concrete steps to eliminate exclusionary zoning. In other words, Biden wants to use a big pot of federal grant money as bait. If a county or mon municipality agrees to weaken or eliminate its single-family zoning, it gets the federal bucks. So it's a question of what's the purpose of uh, zoning in general. It's normally that you have areas of a city that are targeted towards, you know, downtown business district. You might have then an apartment district that's nearby that has, you know, individuals like myself that are more single individuals, generally younger. And then you normally have the more suburby um you know, single family homes for people trying to raise families and whatnot. 
it then gets into a question of why does does this happen uh this is normally linked to something like annexation why would a municipality want to annex communities around it there's a common expression when someone says it isn't about the money it's about the money if you read between lines you'll find dollar signs all over when faced with budgetary problems in a, in a, an urban government in a state that permits forcible annexation has certain choices one is to reduce spending, two, raise taxes, or three, add high-value properties to its boundaries. The first one is rarely considered as something is in the budget is almost unfailing, assumed to be needed or at least desirable. The second choice is, is politically risky because the third choice is available in the state. It may be possible to locate some adjacent ripe fruit to pick. So cities have three choices when it comes to uh, Biden's proposal, when it comes to um, the housing. Um, they can either raise taxes they can reduce their spending, or they can target the suburbs and just start adding them to parts of their cities. Um, however, what Biden's proposal is doing is actually going to lower those high value property values because they're no longer going to be the suburbs that are high value. Um, what makes you know suburbs so profitable is that they are exclusively high value single family homes. Um, and you don't have, you know, giant apartment complexes nearby. You don't have all the uh, traffic and craziness that happens in a city. You know, I live in an apartment. I hear fire trucks, police sirens going off all the time. And that's something that most people don't want to deal with, um, especially when you got kids keeping you up at night. All you want is, you know, a fire station uh, going off, you know, once every hour. Um, I think what this really harms, though, is the potential issue that this actually hurts budgets. Um, in general, you'll find that suburbs hurt. Uh, cities more than they actually help they're normally a tax detriment um they do get profits off of you know the higher taxes from property values but it's normally a lot more expensive to maintain suburbs um i expect that this proposal is actually going to hurt a lot of cities in the long run um but unfortunately it's just going to take years for that to actually happen um but you know once again that's an actually debatable issue you know it's something we can discuss as we go on uh, from the New York Times, Biden says he's willing to compromise on its infrastructure plan, but will not tolerate doing nothing. Um, this comes at a target against Republicans who are saying that they're not going to approve the bill, as well as some of the more um, uh, conservative or more right wing uh, Democrats. Mr. Biden's uh, speech was overtly aimed at congressional Republicans led by Senator Mitch McConnell of Kentucky, the minority, minority leader who have expressed nearly unanimous opposition to the plan. But he was also targeting red and swing state voters who support projects in their communities and speaking to moderate Democrats like Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia, who have suggested they might agree to a corporate tax increase, but one not quite as big as the 20% Biden has proposed. The current rate is 21%. So they're talking about a 7% increase in corporate tax. Asked if he was willing to compromise on the corporate rate in his plan, perhaps to 25%, Mr. Biden replied, I'm willing to negotiate, adding that he was wide open to new proposals that would pay for his plan. Um, it's also on record that Biden said he's not planning on raising taxes, anyone that makes 400,000 or less, and they are right now exclusively looking at corporate taxes. The question is, what is the benefit of targeting corporations with this tax bill? Um, I think after the year that we've had with the pandemic, uh, businesses are probably the ones hurting some of the most, um, especially because they've been doing things like maintaining buildings that a lot of workers haven't even been using. You think about it, a lot of people, you know, have you know their corporate office that's where they house you know thousands of employees during the day and they've had to maintain all of those buildings without any employees going in and out of them obviously you know that's a little bit cheaper but you know businesses are also you know not doing quite as well this year um i think tax hikes are going to be very bad and detrimental um and you have to remember that tax hikes on corporations make it so they're probably less likely to um employ more individuals um i know we often compare our current uh current tax systems to Dem uh, to like things like Denmark, and we talk about how much more Denmark provides for their citizens, we have to remember that Denmark has some of the lowest taxes, um, especially on corporations, and they expect the corporations to um, you know, give that wealth over to employees, which they do pretty well, um, and then there's more of an individual tax rate. By what uh, Biden's proposing is actually the complete opposite of how Denmark and these Swedish, uh, or you know, the, you know, Denmark, Sweden work where there's almost a, a reverse incentive of corporations to give well and do well in their treatment of the employee. And now it's becoming just, you know, the government provide everything. Obviously, there's debate on how that's ought to be done. But in general, I think the biggest issue with this uh, infrastructure program overall is its overreach against what's considered infrastructure. The programs when it comes to things like childcare, 
when it comes to you know housing um or housing regulation um when it comes to like elder care obviously don't fit into the uh, general motion of what infrastructure in is and that's also what the biden administration had so white house chief of, chief of staff ron Klain in 2017 road bridges and water system are the kinds of things most americans think about when they say we need more infrastructure spending this is coming off of chris martin on a 27 cnbc interview with ron Klain. you might be asking who is ron Klain? Ron, Ronald Arnold Klain is American attorney, political consultant, and former lobbyist serving as White House Chief of Staff under President Joe Biden, a Democrat. He was previously Chief of Staff for two Vice Presidents, Al Gore from 1995 to 1999, and Biden from 2009 to 2011. What we see here is the own White House Chief of Staff just four years ago said that infrastructure was roads, bridges, and water. What we see is a giant overreach coming out of the government. We see a giant overreach in what is considered spending um, for infrastructure. And, you know, we have to be honest with our the citizens that are paying for this. I'm not saying that necessarily government doesn't have the right to get involved in any of those other issues, but that's not what they're arguing. They're arguing that this is infrastructure and we need to hold them accountable and hold them to use the proper language when it comes to voting on these bills. Do not attack any type of congressional individual who votes no on these bills based on the fact that they aren't voting on an infrastructure bill. They're they're voting on, you know, a government get involved in everything bill. Government has no right to lie to you. They have no right to lie to your, uh, you know, their constituents. And that's what's being done in these bills. And this is your April 8th, not some news update. Once again, please like and subscribe if you're looking for daily news content and have a good one.